After nearly half a century of isolation, Myanmar is stepping out of the shadows. And in a most fortuitous manner, the country is ushering in a new era of growth, anchored in its ancient industrial roots and trading relationships. Continuing collaborations between China and Myanmar are also redefining age-old norms and practices. This is the story of how two countries, inextricably linked by a common geographical border, have connected, both culturally and economically, through their people. This is Mandalay the last royal capital of the Burmese kingdom. It's here where ancient traditions and age-old industries coalesce with the modern world and its edifices. And it's also in Mandalay that a large ethnic Chinese community have laid their roots and called home, as they now comprise some 30% of the city's population, with an estimation of half a million ethnic Chinese living in Mandalay. Their roots go back to the mid-18th century, when cross-border trade between Myanmar and China spawned the first settlements for the exchange of goods and services. The Chinese legacy is not just obvious in the city, but embodied deep in the values and lifestyles of individuals, like Kun Sai. He is of Yunnan Thai descent, whose forebears settled in Myanmar two generations ago his ethnic roots run deep. He's inherited many of the customs and practices of his Chinese ancestors, none more so than the appreciation for jade. Kun Sai is a jade trader. And the jade market, one of the busiest places in all of Mandalay, is his daily stomping ground. We Kun Sai has been trading for eight years now. Out of the raw stone, he'll make artifacts or jewelry. And he can only do it with the right variety. Jade comes in all hues of green and in different shapes and sizes. And this jade market in Myanmar has all of them. And that's saying a lot because Myanmar is in fact the world's largest producer of jade. Today, Kun Sai is also on a secondary mission. He wants to add more of the green stuff to his stockpile. This, with the intention of reselling it in the Chinese market. That's, in fact, where most of Myanmar's jade ends up. There's good demand from the Chinese, especially since ties between China and Myanmar expanded in the 2000s. The Burmese are also more inclined to sell raw pieces to China because while Myanmar produces the jade, it's actually the Chinese who are the more prolific carvers. 
Kunsai has found some pieces that would be much sought after. The truth is, most of the jade that is sold in Mandalay will find its way to the Chinese market. And it's not just Burmese traders like Kun Sai who bring Burmese jade out to the world. There are also hundreds of Chinese traders who do so. And this section of the Mandalay jade market caters to them exclusively. Here, the Burmese do direct trades with the Chinese on pieces that are crafted in Myanmar. It's a roaring trade, aided by both sides being able to speak a bit of each other's language. Zhang Dingwei comes here once a month. He brings back more than $100,000 of jade each time, back to the big jade market in Yunnan. China's appetite for jade is deeply ingrained in its culture. There's even an old saying that goes, you can put a price on gold, but jade is priceless. Zhou Motet is a journalist based in Mandalay. He's been researching jade's commercial history and the links between China and Myanmar, forged by their mutual appreciation for the precious stone. <laughs> Around 90% of the world's most sought after jade, jadeite, is mined here in Pakan. According to a London-based NGO, Global Witness, Myanmar's jade industry is estimated to be worth about 31 billion US dollars. The precious stone makes up 10% of the country's total exports, and 90% of the jade that is exported is sold to China. <laughs> ပြင်းနေအဆက်ဆက်ကနေကကျောက်စိမ်းကိုဒမျက်တနူးနဲ့ဟာလားအတုံးဆောင်ပြီးစီးတွေမှာကျောက်စိမ်းထမင်းစား
เจ้าซีเนี่ยสร้างมาพี่เราเราเจ้าเราเจ้าเราอภิกูรายพอดีเจ้ากูเงี้ยเจ้าเราเจ้าเราเงี้ยเดียร์พี่เราเราเลยแ
since the market privatized, jade mining has also increased, resulting sometimes in excess stock. <laughs> which is what Liu Wu's friend, Hit Ted, is faced with recently. But the traders are a tightly knit bunch. And Liu Wu knows just the man who might be interested. His friend Kun Sai's workshop is just a five minute walk away. <laughs>有时候也会经常拿来给我看那它科技就没有那么像那边发达了。It's the start of the annual Waso festival today. Waso is the equivalent of Lent for the Buddhists. And as it's customary during this time, Miu Wu and his wife Yamin are donating robes to the monks. It's an act of charity, buoyed by hopes of blessings of prosperity and good health. <laughs> Like the religious observances during Waso, most customs and rituals of Myanmar are intact, largely uninfluenced by outside pressures, thanks to decades of isolation. Traditional practices, ensconced almost in a time warp, remain close to the heart of the Burmese and steeped within the nation's culture. These values are reflected even when it comes to fashion. While worldly fashion can be fickle and trends come and go, there is one piece of clothing that never goes out of style in Myanmar, the longji. The longji is a Burmese garment that men and women wear waist down. It's worn for any occasion, by everyone, anywhere, even at school or in the office. And like many of her fellow countrymen and women, Yamin is determined to keep this traditional garb alive. Three years ago, she left her job in a textile company to launch her own brand of longi. The business has flourished, and she now distributes her products to 27 stores across Myanmar. While the designs of her longis are uniquely Burmese, the raw materials that go into producing the garments are not. Yamin relies on cotton yarn imported from China. 
เราขายได้เราเซนเนี่ยเดี๋ยวเบียร์ลาได้ชีวะซีซูเลยเออชาบุกเดี๋ยวอารมณ์อยู่เนี่ยเราขายได้เซนเบียร์ตรงนั้นเบียร์ชีอ่ะกูขายกูบุกบุกแม่บอกว่าหัวใจมาตัวพังเงินจ่ายเลยกูกูชี้ยาวจ่ายเลยดีว่ากูเลยเนี่ยเลยรุ่นเล่นเนี่ยไปยาวจ่ายเลยเบียร์ซีเนี่ยนะกว่าง Yamin gets her yarn from Minghui, a Chinese importer who's been living in Myanmar for the past 50 years. Minghui supplies are from Chinese cities near the borders, and he distributes it to more than 30 factories like Yamin's across Myanmar. Yamin The Longi seems to be a poignant symbol of how interwoven the two cultures actually are. Made by the Burmese with a little help from Chinese imports, the Longi remains one of the country's most recognizable cultural icons. เขาบอกเลยสิยาบ่เนาะแต่อะไรอ่ะเราอินเทอร์เน็ตโดยอีเมลโดยเทลิโฟนเนี่ยเราเอ่อเขาบอกดิบ่เนาะเลยเดี